Here was one of the first Qi2 certified wireless battery packs on the market. In this video, we are going to compare it with an older Qi1 battery pack of the same size to see what's the difference and is it worth the money. I am going to run tests on both iPhone and Android for all the Android users out there to see if using MagSafe battery packs on your Android is feasible. Alright, let's get into it. I have seen videos of Qi2 and Qi1 wireless charging pads, but I haven't seen videos of Qi2 and Qi1 wireless charging banks specifically. So I decided to do some research. Okay, so what is Qi charging and what is the difference between Qi1 and Qi2? Qi is the universal standard for wireless charging. Qi2, which just came out last year, has updates such as faster charging and standardized magnets for placement. Really, Qi2 is basically a copy of MagSafe. Gracefully, Apple helped develop the standard for Qi2. Okay, so here is one of the first Qi2 certified wireless battery banks. There are other Qi2 accessories, but for wireless banks, this is one of the first. It's the Anchor MagGo Power Bank. It has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, USB type C port on the side. It charges wirelessly at 15 watts and it has 27 watts of wired charging. There is a kickstand. It has an ARM Cortex chip inside for optimized communications with the phone. It comes with a USB Type-C to Type-C cable in the box. It has a unique display on the side which tells you the percent of the battery and how long you have left to charge. This charger is $90 on Amazon, pretty pricey, I know. We will test it against the Banks Mag Club. This is also a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. It is Qi 1 certified and MagSafe compatible. Now in the product description, it says it supports 5 watt, 7.5 watt, 10 watt, and max 15 watt wireless charging. And we will surely test that out on both iPhone and Android here in this video. It also supports 20 watt PD USB type C wired charging. PD meaning power delivery, this is fast charging technology that works through USB Type-C ports only. This particular pack doesn't have a kickstand, but there are some from banks that offer kickstands with the same price. You will get a double-sided USB Type-C cable in the box as well. This charger was $40 on Amazon. The link to both of these chargers will be listed in the description below if you're interested. I will be testing these two battery packs on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Great Nothing Phone 2. The iPhone has a 4,441 milliamp battery inside, a USB Type-C port which is 100 times better than the Lightning port. It has MagSafe wireless charging up to 15 watts, Qi2 wireless charging up to 15 watts, and Qi1 wireless charging up to 7.5 watts. The Nothing Phone 2 has a 4,700 milliamp hour battery. I have a case with a MagSafe ring on it, the Halo Lock ring, which is the best one I've tried. I use this ring on all of my phones actually, link to this will be down below. It has 45 watt wire charging and 15 watts wireless charging. Also, I did test these battery packs with and without the case for extra clarity. The results didn't vary much. Let's get started with the Anchor Qi2 battery pack on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Note that when charging wirelessly, you lose power through the transfer and through the heat. So the iPhone has a 4000 milliamp battery and the battery pack is rated at 10,000 milliamps. You would think that we will be able to get two whole charges using this battery pack, but that's not the case. I slapped on the charger when the phone was on 5%. After 15 minutes, the phone charged to 22%. After 30 minutes, 33%. After 45 minutes, 50%. And after one hour, the phone charged to 56%. After an hour and a half, the phone charged to 84%. And after two hours, the phone was fully charged. When finished, the MagSafe battery pack was left at 27%. As stated, you won't be able to get two full charges using this battery pack and that's due to loss of power. I ran these tests three times because I kind of was at disbelief, but the results was the same. This is incredible charging speed for a wireless battery pack. 
These speeds are equivalent to a wired charging brick that Apple would have gave you in the box a couple years back. Now let's look at the results from the Banks G1 wireless charger on the iPhone. Remember, this battery pack is also rated at 10,000 milliamps. Starting with the phone at 5% again, after 15 minutes the phone charged to 15%. After 30 minutes the phone charged to 24%. After 45 minutes, 33%. 1 hour, 43%. 1 and a half hour, 60%. 2 hours, 77%. 2 and a half hours, 91%. And 3 hours, 100%. Note that charging your phone at high speeds when the battery is almost full does kill battery cells. So software is usually in place to slow down charging speeds at 90% and up. So when doing any charging test, wireless or not, you will see the charging speeds slow down at this point. I would recommend if you're using a battery pack to go ahead and take off the pack once you get above 85%. After the phone was fully charged, the battery pack was left at 25%. Both the Anchor and Banks battery pack did not get hot. This is still a pretty good speed for a wireless battery pack, but we do see a considerable increase with the Qi 2 charger. It charged the iPhone to 100% one whole hour faster than the Qi 1. Now let's switch over to the Android side. With the Anchor Qi 2 charger, I started charging the phone at 7%. After charging the phone for 15 minutes, the phone charged to 14%. After 30 minutes, the phone charged to 19%. 45 minutes, 24%. 1 hour, 29%. 1 and a half hour, 34%. 2 hours, 50%. 3 hours, 68%. And 4 hours, 84%. At this point, the charger kept disconnecting to the Android phone. This may be due to heat. After about 4 hours and 20 minutes, the phone was at 89% charge. At this point, I gave up. The battery pack was left at 36%. These battery packs are MagSafe and they are meant for iPhones. So on Android, there is a lack of communication between the charger and the phone. Compatibility with the hundreds of Android phones out there does vary. Here are the results for the Qi 1 charger on the Android phone and in summary, the results are exactly the same as the Qi 2. That is because the Nothing Phone 2 or any other Android phone out in early 2024 does not support Qi 2 charging, hence the results are the same. These speeds are very low, depressingly low as an Android user. Both the Qi 1 and Qi 2 chargers took over 4.5 hours to fully charge the Android phone, so Android users beware. This is a whopping 2.5 hours slower than the Anchor Qi 2 charging the iPhone. But I do have a workaround. Make it unwireless. For us Android users, use this extra short Type-C cable. It solves all our problems. With wireless charging, you lose a ton of power through the wireless transfer and heat. Also, it charges at a slower rate. Adding a wire combats both of these problems, especially on Android. With this, you get the versatility of a MagSafe detachable battery pack and also the performance of wired charging. Remember, both of these packs use 27 and 20 watt wired charging. So here are the speeds of the battery pack on the Nothing Phone 2 using this little wire. Starting at 5%, after 15 minutes, the phone charged to 25%. After 30 minutes, the phone charged to 44%. After 45 minutes, 64%. After one hour, 84%. After about an hour and 35 minutes, 100%. The battery pack had about 46% juice left in it. Remember, when I tested the Anchor Qi 2 charger on the iPhone, the battery pack was left at 27% when the iPhone was fully charged. As you see here, when using a wire, you can successfully get two whole charges with one of these 10,000 milliamp battery packs. This is because there is less power loss. On Android, we can charge the phone a whopping three hours faster when using a wire. Since the results are so good, I personally use a smaller battery pack because these 10,000 milliamp batteries are pretty thick. Links to this Type-C cable will be down below. So for iPhone users, both of these chargers are pretty amazing. The Qi 2 charger does charge the phone to 100% one hour faster than the Qi 1 charger. But remember, the Anchor Qi 2 charger is $90, $30 less 
than a Qi One charger from Banks. Is the performance upgrade worth it? That's going to be a decision for you and your bank account. But now you know the results for both of the chargers. And for my Android folks, these MagSafe chargers are both terrible for us. I highly advise to use this mini Type-C cable to solve all the problems. Alright, that's it for this video. Links are below for the mini Type-C charger cable, both the Anchor and Banks battery pack, and the MagSafe ring. Like if you want to help me out. If not, that's cool. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you want more in-depth videos for Qi 1, Qi 2, and MagSafe accessories, make sure to subscribe. Alright, peace.